Here, let's see if this piece of crap works. <laughs> what the hell? I guess this remote also interacts with that. Oh, this is going to be a long video. Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84 and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at this thing. This is a sling box, not to be confused with Sling TV. This was a hardware solution to digitally stream your analog or I guess quasi-digital video formats from your home set-top box, cable box, satellite box, whatever, to your mobile device or your computer. And these things came out around 2007, 2008, and the service is about to be discontinued in just a few days. So I have this example, brand new in the box, and I figured, well, it's a good a time as any to open it up, see if it works, see how it works, and see what we can do with it. And if you like unboxing old items and torturing it to work in a new era, well, I think you'd like a lot of the stuff on this channel, so please consider subscribing and liking the video. Now what we have here is a Slingbox Solo. This is a standard definition streaming device. It will accept HD signals, but it will only stream SD content. You had to buy the, I think it's called the, yeah, Pro HD model uh, to do high definition stuff. But I actually had one of these and used one of these for a long time at my parents' place because they had satellite TV and what I would do is plug this in into one of the satellite boxes and I was able to wirelessly and remotely watch television content from wherever. That came in handy because my apartment did not have cable and they wanted to charge an extra fee for satellite service. I made an FCC complaint and, well, they're not doing that anymore. Anyway, this little thing is quite handy. To understand the value and usefulness of such a device, you have to take your mind back to about 2007. Unlike today, not every movie company and TV studio and their parent company have their own streaming service. Streaming television shows and movies and stuff like that was a bit different. Sure, you had Netflix, but a lot of the websites that you would have to access to stream content from a local network television station or their affiliate was only going to be accessible via your computer. The iPhone was brand new, and there was not a lot of support for mobile web streaming. A lot of the stuff was still flash. It was all kind of a mess. In fact, it wasn't until 2008 that YouTube started to encode their videos in the H.264 format. Previously, those videos were in Flash, but Apple had their hand in pushing them to do this so that their videos could be watchable on their Apple TV device. But anyway, hopefully that gives you some context into where this device sits in that era. It was an interesting item and it allowed you to basically plug in your cable box, your satellite box, or practically anything else into the analog input jacks of this device and have it stream it over the internet to your computer or your mobile device. So let's unbox this minty example here, see what's inside and if we can get it to work. Very nice. All right, so it says, congratulations, you are just moments away from watching your TV anywhere. Cool. And we have a quick start guide, which we'll take a look at in a moment. And we have some packaged items. I remember this from the one I had back in the day. So this looks to be the unit itself. We have uh, some AV cords and maybe a network cable and some well, this is a power cord. All right, well, let's unwrap them. Okay, we have a power adapter here. This is an AC adapter that's five volts, four amps, and center positive. And we have a little label on here that is basically telling us what models it's compatible with. The Solo, the Sling Catcher, and the Pro HD. Okay, so we have an ethernet cable for connecting the sling box to our network. We have a pair of cables to give us standard definition video and stereo audio from our satellite or cable box to our sling box device. And then we have a pair of infrared blasters. This plugs into the sling box and allows you to control devices via infrared, similar to a remote control. And this will be pointed towards our cable box or maybe our television. Now let's open the sling box itself. All right, there it is. So this is the Slingbox Solo. 
You can see the inputs on the back and we'll explore that a little bit closer in a bit. Okay, so we have everything unpacked. Let's take a look at this quick start guide. Alrighty, well, we have some steps to follow. So it tells you what's in the box, which is always nice. Make sure you're not missing anything. Uh, it's telling you to connect it to your cable box. So you could use either the composite cables that come with it, or if you have component, you could plug those in, but we're just gonna deal with standard definition for today. Um, it's just talking about different connections here. It's talking about plugging in that infrared blaster here. And let's see, connecting it to your network. All right, and then just plugging in the power. So simple enough, I think we could follow those directions. I have this dusty old little Vizio TV that we're gonna be using for our demonstration here today. But we also need something to plug into the sling box. And I have this old cable box. I'm 99% sure this will not do anything for us today, but might as well plug it in. And if not, well, we could just pretend. Okay, so we're gonna use the AV cables that came with it to plug our sling box into something else like this little cable box. And then we'll need another set of cables to plug into that and uh, plug it into our television. Although technically this thing could run headless. You don't need it plugged into your TV if everything's set up correctly. So I'm going to plug these in into the input here. So that's the white, red, and yellow cables up top. And then I have a set of cables already plugged into the back of the TV. This will be the output. So we're gonna plug those in. And this is the component cables. If you wanted to instead uh, plug those in, we also have S-Video, uh, from your cable box or satellite box or out to your television, you could do so as well. There's a little jack for that infrared receiver. I'm not sure if you could see it in front of my fingers. Uh, we also have a USB port. Not really sure what that does. Um, I don't remember using that back in the day, but maybe it was for upgrades or future functionality. We do have a network port for our ethernet cable and there's the power jack and a reset button. So I guess we should get everything else untangled here. Good thing I always have an ethernet cable just hanging around off camera here. So we're gonna plug that in. It's nice that they had that with the little plastic prong facing up because sometimes it's the opposite way around and trying to undo that cable is a nightmare. All right, and we just need power. I guess we'll get everything else sorted. Now again, I doubt this cable box is gonna be happy for us, but we're just gonna plug it in just to demonstrate how you would plug this into your cable or satellite box back in the day. All right, and then we just have our power cable. I'm gonna plug that into the sling box. Oh, I almost forgot. We have some plastic on here. There, now it's ready to attract rabbit hair, dust, and fingerprints. Oh yeah, I don't think this has any user interface or anything. I think we just have to turn this cable box on. And maybe it just does a pass through or something like that. And this cable box is probably not gonna do anything. So yeah, this, <laughs> this is probably not a good example, but you could see how it would have been set up. You have the sling box here plugged into your cable box. Assumingly you'd get some sort of signal on this and then you'd be able to stream that to another device on the network, either locally or over the internet. Ah, okay, yeah, this cable box is trying to download some information and I don't think it's gonna work correctly, uh, but you could see that the signal is going through the sling box and to the television. So let's plug in something easier like a VCR or something like that and we could see this thing in action. All right, so in lieu of our cable box setup, we have a VCR here, which should hopefully just work fine as a substitute. There we go, some snow and noise. Now, because of the antiquated copyright laws of the United States, I have to be careful about what I wanna show you on this television and this sling box thing. And I have just the thing, a old, old videotape of Porky Pig and Friends, volume two. And uh, yeah, this first cartoon is supposed to be in the public domain and this tape is from 1987. And yeah, I'm not gonna be playing any audio, but anyway, let's just see how this thing works. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> what 
What's going on here? I don't think it likes this tape. <laughs> this stop button broke. Ah, oh, jeez. Now, for those of you who are too young to understand what a VCR is, it's basically a videotape player. Similar to a DVD player, but it uses analog tapes instead of a digital disc. And it loves to eat tapes. Let's open this thing up. Oh, that's nice. There's some corrosion on the tape head. Excellent. Yeah, let me get a shot of this. There is something on the tape head there. Uh, I don't know if that's metal or corrosion or what, but it doesn't look good. So let's try and rescue the tape out of this behemoth. Okay, well, we got our very important Porky Pig tape back. So I got that going for me. Let's try a different VCR. Hopefully this one will cooperate. Okay, so let's try that tape again. Much happier noises this time. Kind of. That's normal. To totally normal. It won't stop or play. At least it ejects. Let's try cartoons are fun. You know that's legit, don't you? So, <laughs> really? They, could, they were too cheap to even put paper on the top. Oh gosh, this just screams quality. 1989. Pretty sure this was a copy of a copy, but whatever. Nope. Now this is not a VCR. This is a Laserdisc player. Well, more than that, it's a Laserdisc and DVD player, but we're gonna output some video image out of this, hopefully, and uh, continue with our demonstration. Of course, I picked the one Laserdisc player in the house that doesn't wanna turn on. Okay, let's try that again. Hey, this one does work, excellent. Okay, so now we have something that would work. This is a Laserdisc player, this is a sling box. They were never really meant to go together, but we're just gonna pretend here to get some sort of video signal to this so we can continue on with this crazy demonstration. Now I do have to be careful of what I play, and I have this lovely example, which is very fitting. This is a teaching, learning, and technology planning guide that Apple put out. Pretty sure this is not gonna hit any matches because I have yet to digitize it. So let's eject this thing and we'll have the sound off just to play it safe. But yeah, laser discs are pretty damn cool. Uh, they contain analog video and sometimes digital audio signals. And hopefully this will play just fine. It would help if I plug the damn thing in. Here we go, we have a signal playing on our lovely little TV here. I have the volume turned off, but oh yeah, that's some good Apple footage there. But anywho, now that we have a signal into this box, let's see how we could watch that signal being streamed somewhere else. Now back in the day, you actually had to pay for the streaming app on some mobile devices like the iPhone. I think originally it was 30 US dollars. That was then discounted a little bit and now it's free because they're about to end of life the darn thing but uh, I'm gonna download it on my iPad here and see if we get it to work. So it looks like I have to create an account, so I'm gonna do that on the iPad here. Okay, so now the app is talking to the network to see if it could find this sling box. I guess it has to register it or set it up or something first. Okay, so now I've found it. Uh, it's telling me a PC or Mac is required for setup. So I guess this device is too old to be set up via the iOS app, so I guess I'll do that. Well, that was easier said than done. Even this old software was forcing me to do an update before I could do anything. And that update froze at 25%. Apparently that's a known issue with the Mac software. Their solution? Use a PC. So I did just that and jumped through the hoops to install the PC version of the software to finish setting up my Slingbox. Now it did ask me to register for an account and log in. So I'm assuming any remote playback from the Slingbox will not work once these services go offline although maybe we could still get it to work on a local network once everything shuts down. 
Okay, so I had to set up this sling box on a computer, but once I did that, look at that, it's displaying on the iPad. Working out pretty well too. I also have that remote, which is kind of cool, so hopefully that's in focus. My apologies if it's not. Um, but that lets me pause, so if I do that, it should pause the video. It's not coming, oh, there it goes, <laughs> still frame. Uh, and if I press play, it resumes the video. So that's again working via these little IR blaster cable thingies. These enable the sling box to send a command to an infrared controlled device. This is really cool to get working again. I mean, I haven't used one of these in ages. You have to remember back in 2007 or 2008 or around that time, there weren't a lot of streaming services like there are today. Every company seems to have one. And back then, a lot of the stuff was only on a website via flash and you could only get clips of shows. You couldn't watch the whole thing. So this really allowed you to not be tethered to what those companies would give you. You could just watch anywhere, anytime, whatever was on your cable box or your satellite box. Again, this didn't record or anything like that. You would have to use your DVR or PVR to record shows and you could control with the remote, your recorded list and stuff like that. But this was just basically playback, but you controlled what played back. I remember using this on a web browser back in the day and I think there was even some software for the Mac that I used. I think I used it on the iPad once or twice, but I was primarily watching it on the computer. Again, this is standard definition, so it didn't look the best, but really there wasn't much of a choice otherwise. It was either this or nothing. Unlike today, you could hop on YouTube or other services and catch a show or catch up on a movie you may have missed, but <laughs> I took what I could get and uh, this device was very handy when I didn't have television service in my home. I am curious about the system requirements. This box uh, does state that it's a universal application, meaning it will work on PowerPC Macintoshes and Intel-based Macs. And we have some PC requirements of a Windows Vista or XP with Service Pack 2, a Pentium 3, 1.3 gigahertz processor, etc. And the Mac minimum requirements are a PowerPC G4, G5, 800 megahertz, or an Intel processor and that requires Mac OS 10, 10.3.9 or later, so that is Panther. So let's see if we could dig up a Mac that meets those requirements. Oh boy, we're running out of space on this desk. This is an iMac G5. This is actually my brother's old iMac G5. Thank you, Dan. And uh, we're gonna see if that Slingbox software wants to work on this machine. All right, so we have an iMac G5 here. This is a two gigahertz iMac G5 with gigabyte memory, and this is running Mac OS 10 Leopard. That's 10.5. So I'm gonna quit the application here just to show you how it works. Uh, I'm running version 1.0.10 of the Sling Player app, and it should just connect here. Yep, there it goes. You can see that uh, we have our display of whatever the LaserDisc player is playing. So let me press play here. And there's a, about a five to seven second delay of whatever the sling box is getting to, to this device here. And that's not bad at all, really. I mean, you'd get a bit of a longer delay if you were doing this over cellular or whatnot, but this is a local network. So the latency is actually pretty good. You can see here we have the remote control layout just like we did on the iPad. So if I press pause here, that should send a signal to the LaserDisc player and it pauses the video. But that's just really neat. I mean, it's such a shame that this stuff is just gonna be killed and discontinued sometime soon because, you know, it works. I mean, we pulled this thing out of the box. It's brand new. It, it hasn't even been on for a few hours and it's doing a great job of taking standard definition video and streaming it over the network. And it works with this software on this, this G5 Mac, and you know, even work on a G4 apparently. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, kind of sucky, <laughs> but I guess that's just the way things are because a lot of stuff relies on servers and special versions of apps and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, the software for this was a little bit difficult to find. And although the apps for the iPad and the iPhone for the Slingbox are still in the app store, I'm pretty sure those will be pulled sometime soon. I'm actually surprised that there are 64 bit apps. So they actually run on the iPad uh, and they weren't discontinued long ago. But yeah, it's just one of those things that makes you 
kind of sad <laughs> because you won't be able to play around with this stuff in a while. I have fond memories of using this thing back in the day to watch TV in my apartment and such. And yeah, it's sort of a trip down memory lane revisiting this thing. Sure, the video quality wasn't perfect. It was still standard definition, but back then that was perfectly fine for me. But yeah, about the iOS apps for the iPhone for the Slingbox stuff, I'm pretty sure it was like $30 back in the day. It was pretty pricey. And I know my brother bought the app because he used the Slingbox for watching sports and stuff like that. So it was pretty important to him. And I just sort of piggybacked off the same iOS uh, iCloud account or App Store account rather uh, to watch this stuff at the same time because um, I had my own little device. But yeah, uh, you can still download the app now. But since the service is being discontinued, I think on November 9th of 2022, you have limited time to use these things. And although I did read online that some people are like hacking these to get them to work, it's probably only going to be working with web software and not with this older software, which is a shame because it runs beautifully on this G5 and probably on a G4 too. And yeah, just losing that functionality of something that works perfectly fine, but relies on the login for a server is, is just terrible. Yeah, I mean, this must be a newer box because it's saying now you could watch on your iPhone because I believe this came out in late 2007. The App Store didn't come out until mid-2008, so you didn't even have downloadable apps on the iPhone until after this product came out. So this must be a, a later printing of the box. Besides the iPhone, it looks like there's support for other mobile devices there. <laughs> it has a picture of a mobile phone that's very antiquated looking. Oh, on the box, it actually says Palm OS and Symbian. Look at that. Oh, that'd be so cool to get this working on a Palm Pilot. Ooh, do I have one that'll work with this? I found some devices here. Hopefully one of them will work. Uh, and I guess I need to find a charger for some of them. We have a uh, Palm Tungsten W, a TX, a Life Drive. Oh, oh, this is a Trio, but it's actually a Windows one. Um, so that probably won't work. But uh, yeah, let me get a power cable. Okay, so this is the Palm Life Drive. It actually has a hard drive in there, which is pretty neat. I've had this working not too long ago, but although it's charging, it doesn't seem to be turning on. So I think the battery is too flat for it to want to do anything or it needs to charge up for a while. Now, thankfully, this Palm TX model uses the same power cord. So let's see if that'll work. Hey, look at that. <laughs> it actually works. Awesome. So now we need to get the software onto this thing. Okay, that software was pretty difficult to find. I had to go through the Internet Archive and there were a lot of dead links. There was a link to the beta software, but then it, at some point it became paid software. But um, I do have it on this SD card, so I think we should just be able to install it from here. And uh, let me get a close up somehow. Maybe I'll record with my phone and we'll see if this works. So let's try and install it and see if it'll work on this particular Palm Pilot. It does not list this model as being compatible, but we'll see. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> sure. Oh, you had to pay for it. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Let's press play on the laser disc player. Register later. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. Slingbox directory. Add new slingbox. Oh gosh. Uh... Holy crap, it works. <laughs> This is crazy. This is on a freaking Palm Pilot. The quality's not bad either. My goodness. That's great. That's pretty darn smooth for a freaking Palm Pilot. This is a Palm TX. It's not exactly the top of the line model, I don't think, but look at that. All right, let's see what we could do. We can pause. <laughs> this is insane. We can play. Yeah, 
It's struggling a little bit. Come on. There we go. This is pretty damn cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't think it would be this good at all. I mean, we are over Wi-Fi, so cellular probably would not have been as fast at the time, but this is still pretty damn phenomenal. I'm glad I got this working before this service shut down because, I mean, oh, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. I'm just totally geeking out right now. This is so neat. Let's see what other settings we have. Remote control, video input. So, yeah, I could change that if I wanted to. Uh, remote control, general playback, navigation, custom, player mode. So we do audio only if we wanted to. Uh, settings. That gives us our audio settings and the ability to show stats. Display mode, normal or letterboxed. Okay, so this is normal right now, but if we were displaying or... I guess broadcasting something that did have a different aspect ratio. We can say letterboxed. Well, there it goes. And it's squishing that. So we're going to turn that off. There, that looks better. And then we have about. Yes, yeah, so this is version 1.0.0.17 from 2007. That is so freaking cool. <laughs> just look at that look look how well that plays back i mean considering the technology involved i mean i'm i'm really impressed with this thing don't get me wrong <laughs> it was a little bit uh, convoluted to get going especially because we had to put the software on here and finding the software is a pain and to get a 802.11b wi-fi compatible signal i had to share the ethernet connection from this mac thankfully mac os 10's internet sharing option makes that easy, but yeah, still, I'm very surprised and pleased by the results. Well, nothing lasts forever, unfortunately, and this service will be discontinued on November 9th, 2022, which, as of the recording of this video, is just in a few days. And that stinks, but you know what? Um, we got to play around with it while it lasted, I guess. I mean, I even found another one of these things while I was looking around for these Palm Pilots in the basement. So it's like this hard roll just stopped working, which is nuts because it's working so well now. I mean, yeah, it's standard definition and all that stuff, but you know, it works and it's kind of cool. And I'm a big AV geek. I love this stuff. Now I do have some good news. I was lamenting about all this stuff being inaccessible and going away completely. And well, that's not actually true. You see, I posted a teaser picture of this while I was filming on Twitter, and it turns out Clint of LGR is also playing around with these things, and his is an older model, which seems to work just fine without an internet connection, just over a local network disconnected from the internet. So that got me thinking, I wonder if this works the same way, and actually, you can manually add a sling box on the network. It's not entirely happy about it, it seems to be hit or miss, you have to have uh, content actually being fed into this, otherwise the box will go to sleep and you won't see the IP address on your network and all sorts of fun things. But this is actually playing back now over the local network and I actually got the Palm Pilot to do the same. So I think depending on the version of the software and the firmware on the box, it could still be possible to use these things after they shut down the service. Well, there you have it, the sling box. A pretty interesting piece of kit for back in the day and something I'm glad we got to play around with one last time. If you like these sorts of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to like the video as well. If you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, my handle is Mac84TV. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you could do so as well. For as little as a dollar a month, you could get exclusive access to behind the scenes goodies and video previews before anyone else. But that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you right here next time on Mac84.